Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to take a look at in this video is a new line of firewalls from Grandstream Networks. And these are called the GCC series. And this one that I have here is the GCC 6010. I bought this one myself. They did send me one, uh, but I, I wanted to have a couple of them. And real quick, let's, let's talk about what these are, and then we'll go over the physical interface on this. So the Grandstream GCC series is converged. It's their unified communications plus their networking gear all in one. So it's an all in one appliance, but where they are differing from a lot of other vendors in their space is that their next gen firewall is absolutely amazing. And we're going to do uh, multiple videos on this device. This is kind of the intro to the to the series. So you can see here that the uh, this is the GCC 6010. That's the one I've got. There's a 6011 and then there's a 6010W, which has Wi-Fi in it. Now, not only do they have the firewall, not only can they manage switches and access points, but they also have a Grandstream UCM PBX built into that. And you'll see that when we get to the interface. So uh, they do have multiple WAN. So let's take a look at this. So they all have two, two, uh, two, uh, <laughs> the GCC 6010 and 6011 each have at least two 2.5 gigabit SFP ports and five gigabit Ethernet ports with some PoE out. And you can see the uh, 6011 has 10 gigabit Ethernet ports with three of those being WAN. And you can have up to three WAN connections on this. Out of the box, there are two. There's one of your SFPs and then port number five is your Ethernet WAN. They have SD card slots so you can do backups and things like that usb and then a reset switch they each have two gigs of ram and 32 gigs of storage now the 6011 can actually have an optional m.2 ssd they have they have listed 2.5 gigabits of throughput on the throughput on the firewall one gig of ipsec vpn pass through with IDS IPS enabled, we are supposed to get 900 megabits of throughput. <clears throat> By default, the PBX can have 12 users with four concurrent calls, but you can upgrade that. I don't have the pricing on that. That's not quite been released yet, but you can upgrade it. And um, it's what's really interesting about this is, I mean, this thing weighs like four pounds. Um, but it's a nice, compact, sleek box. And wait till you <laughs> wait till you see the software. So it is, you can mount it on a desktop, you can mount it on the wall. The 6011 has a rack mount kit. So I'm hoping they'll send me a 6011 once those are available. And one of the things that you're going to see is Grandstream is always about the quality of service. And so you'll, you'll see that when we get in there. All the different types of VPNs, they do support WireGuard, OpenVPN, IPsec, unfortunately PPTP, uh, <laughs> people are still supporting that. But you can manage it with GDMS, with the either um, hosted in Grandstream's cloud, or you can uh, manage it with your own GWN manager. You can manage it locally and... If you manage APs with it, you can manage up to 150 access points, up to 500 clients. So they're telling you, you know, what this is, what this is rated for. So then the 6010W has a Wi-Fi 6 access point built into it. So you can see all of those things. Now, I don't believe, oh, it does. So the, the 60W also has the PBX. They're saying that you can do three, three gigs of throughput on that you can have three WANs but then that IDS IPS is also limited at 900 megs so I'll leave a link to this down in the um, down in the description but 
I am super excited about this this line of firewalls. <clears throat> That's why I bought one, because I bought one before they sent me one. That's how excited I am about it. So as you can see here, if I can get this thing to focus, all right, so starting over here, we've got our PoE outports or just standard Ethernet. By default, port 5 is WAN. And then I think seven, I don't know, we'll see when we get in there with the SFPs is, uh, but here are your two SFP ports, USB, you've got your um, indicator there. On the back, we have our power plug, reset, micro SD card. This helps hold the power cable. You got your Kensington lock, you've got your grounding lug. And then on the bottom, the feet come pre-installed. And then you have the, uh, the wall mount that's built in there. So without any further ado, let's hop in and take a look at the interface on this. So they are offering uh, subscriptions for uh, the advanced um, uh, advanced security stuff. Each one of these comes with a year. So, and by the way, MSRP or not MSRP or what I paid for this was, a uh, this is the, the 6010. I paid $199 plus shipping for this. So very economical. Uh, the 6011, I think was 299 and I can't remember the price on the 6010W, but here's our main interface. Once we log in. So it gives us our heart, you know, our, all of our version information, our IP addresses, Mac addresses. Um, the uptime is only 48 minutes because we had a power outage here. Over here, it talks about the system load. Then you can see the different uh, modules that are built in. So we've got our networking, so we can uh, configure that. Firewall is separate from the networking, and you'll see that. You've got network nodes, and you've got PBX and UC endpoints. So here on the main overview page, there is a topology view. Now this uh, is only the only device I'm managing right now. We are going to throw some switches and APs on here for the next upcoming videos. Under system settings, you got your name, your uh, time zone, NTP server. If you are hooked to a manager server, you can configure that there. Here's our security settings here, web access, SSH is enabled by uh, default, and then remote access without a password. So if you have this bound to GDMS, you can allow either yourself or people that are admins on your GDMS site to access this without a password. I don't recommend doing that, but you can do it. You can set up system schedules here, user management here. We can create different roles. So you can see we can actually change the roles per um, per module in the device. Here's our email settings, uh, SMS settings. We can upgrade the PBX, uh, that license. So right now we can have 12 extensions with four concurrent calls on our device, but we can upgrade that. Under maintenance, we can do an upgrade and we can do an official online upgrade. We can upgrade via the network. Of course, here's our firmware path, all of the options. We can do scheduled upgrades. We can also, and what I did when I got this was I just uploaded the firmware down here and upgraded it locally. We have backup and restore, factory reset, and then we have notifications. Uh, is uh, when we get to the PBX part, um, I'll probably say it again, but you cannot export out of a, an existing UCM at this point and import the configuration. So you do have to either import CSV files with your information, but you can't like do like an entire backup. All right, under the networking module, this should look familiar to you. So we've got our overview. Here's our port info, shows us all the ports. So yeah, five is our default. WAN and I'm plugged into uh, LAN 1. Here's our network settings. So here's that port configuration. And you can see, okay, so I'm actually in WAN 2 by default, which is 
uh, port 5, port 7, which is this SFP port, that is WAN 1. And then here is our PoE support. I think a uh, total budget for this might be 36 watts. Let's bring that up real quick, see if we can. Uh, yeah, maximum PoE output is, I was just on it, 36 watts. So uh, most phones are going to draw probably between 4 and 6. So you're going to be in good shape. Access points might draw between 4 and 10, maybe a little higher depending on the model. Here's our WAN configuration. So by default, they are both enabled. Here's our LAN setup. So, of course, VLAN ID1, which is our untagged VLAN. We can do a PBX trunk VLAN. We'll get into that in some later videos. VLAN port settings, so we can tag it and and untag VLANs on certain ports, static IP binding, local DNS setup, and bonjour gateway. Bonjour, bonjour. Here's your IGMP, your uh, multicast setup, so it can be uh, the the proxy and the, or the router. We've got network acceleration right now. Hardware acceleration is turned on. With this turned on, I don't believe QoS. Yeah, once enabled, QoS rate limit traffic statistics will not take effect. So we have to disable disable the acceleration if we want QoS, which we'll test that when we get to that part of it. Here's all of our different P, uh, VPN options, PPTP, IPsec, OpenVPN, L2TP, WireGuard, and then this is where you actually add the users here under remote users. Under routing, we can do policy routing. So right now you can see that there's a load balance set up between those and then here's where we can actually add our policy based route here's our static routes this device is fully um, it does support IP version 6 fully so you'll see a lot of IP version 6 stuff hanging around if you're interested in IP version 6 let me know down in the comments here's our traffic management so we can take a look at our traffic statistics here is that QoS, and you, as you can see here in this device, it is pretty, pretty comprehensive. So we can actually do QoS based on applications. We can also do it on DSCP tags, class rules. Then here's one that says always prioritize voice, and then, okay, which SIP UDP port are you going to use? Now, if you're not using UDP, that's something that we're probably going to have to look into. Some people are using um, uh, TLS with their with their VoIP bandwidth limiting, so we can set this up and we can do it individual or shared. We can do it uh, on IP addresses, MAC addresses, and then we can set that. We can actually also do this on a schedule. So you could rate limit during the day and not have a limit at night. Here's the intelligent speed limit, and this is when enabled, it automatically limits the speed of download or upload traffic when the CPU load is high. Access control, we've got forcing safe search. External access, we have dynamic DNS providers we can set up. Here's our port forwarding, DMZ, universal plug and play, which you know I'm not a fan of, and turn service. If you want to know more about the turn service, let me know down in the comments. Under maintenance, here's our TR069 connection, SNMP, so we support version 1, 2, and 3. We've got a full suite of system diagnostics, so you've got ping and trace route, core file, we can do captures, send uh, um, logs to an external syslog server, here's our ARP cache, link tracing, so this is where we can actually see on the ports what's going where so you can monitor the traffic. Here's more of our uh, network diagnostics, PoE diagnostics, and then cloud manager connection diagnostics, which we're not, we're not hooked to the cloud. Here's more alerts and email notifications. System settings, this is where we can generate certificates for OpenVPN and a few other things with, with, that we're gonna get into. If you plug a USB drive into this, you can set up file sharing for people on your network. 
And then here is the radius setup. Okay, under firewall, this is one of the more exciting things about this appliance. So right here you can see that I activated this on 629. It expires on 629, 2025, and I am licensed. So I am licensed for the, the enterprise threat um, updates and things like that. So firewall, first of all, let's take a look at the firewall policy. So here are the rules, the default rules, inbound rules, the, and these are all default, forwarding rules. And then under advanced NAT, we've got source NAT, destination NAT, We've got global configuration, so we can uh, flush connection reload. When this option is enabled, the firewall configuration changes are made. Existing connections that have been permitted. So it will, if you turn that on and you make firewall changes, it's going to flush your, your connection tracking table for you automatically. Security defense, we've got denial of service. We've got spoofing defense. Then this is where things start getting kind of cool. So we've got anti malware built in and it says to detect HTTPS URLs please enable the SSL proxy and we're going to get to that in a minute. So anti-malware is going to scan the packets and you can do low, medium, or high depth and then you can tell it to scan compressed files. Under virus signature uh, library you can see that this is being provided by Grandstream. My subscription doesn't expire until 2025 and this is set to update automatically intrusion prevention ids ips so we've got our mode here of notify notify and block or no action here's our security level and do we want it to be low medium high extremely high or custom now if we select custom now we get to see everything that they have in there and there's 19 categories so I'm assuming extremely high is everything turned on. You can add exceptions to that. And then here is the botnet monitoring. So if you're making connections to IP addresses that are known, uh, known to participate in botnets, you can monitor, you can block, you can take no, no action. You can also do that with domain names. And this is all being updated um, by Grandstream. And you can see here, I've got a subscription until 6-29-2025, and these also update daily. Under content control, we can do DNS filtering. So we can do uh, simple matching. We can do wildcard matches. Under web filtering, and once again, it says to filter HTTPS, please enable SSL proxy. So we can turn this on. Here we can do that uh, basic URL like we were talking about, we can do a wildcard or we can do, you know, strict just whatever.com. These are all of the different URL categories um, that, that you can have blocked. You can do keyword filtering. And then the URL signature library is also part of of the updates and it is updating daily application filtering so we can enable that and then we can also turn on the ai recognition when enabled ai deep learning algorithms will be used to optimize the accuracy and reliability of application classification but may consume more cpu and memory resources now you can see each one of these um, broad categories and if we click on it, it's going to bring up a list of everything that's inside of those categories as far as applications go. So if we go to something like cloud and CDN services, you've got Alibaba, AWS, Cloudflare, Co uh, Cogent, Zscaler. So you name it there. Um, Facebook Cloud, DigitalOcean. If we go to news. It's got Al Jazeera, BBC, CBS, CNN, Fox News, Google News. So you can start filtering those apps out of your network. And look, there's 93 VPNs that you can block. So you can really dig into it here. You can do override 
uh, filter rules here. So you can come in and you can allow certain things or um, block certain things. And then this signature library is being updated weekly and is part of those updates that are being provided. Now, here is the SSL proxy. Basic settings, you just flip it on. Um, now, we talked about kind of uh, SSL inspection. We're going we're gonna to do the setup on this, but we're not going to do it in this video. But we can turn it on. Here's our CA certificates. We're going to get into all that, how to deploy it, the whole bit. This is just kind of a quick overview. And then we can do a uh, proxy exemption list. This was in here, and it was finance, and I, I didn't do that. And then here's a log that's going to show all of the hits that are coming through. And then you can do email notifications uh, based on what you're filtering in the firewall. This thing is going to be fantastic. And I've already been testing it, and it works, and it works really well. All right, so network nodes is what this other module is called. And so you can see here, this is where our access points would show up if we were managing them. And then here's everything for our Wi-Fi, SSIDs, uh, PPSK, radio settings, mesh, block list. If we have switches in here, this is where our switches are going to show up. We can do some global switch configuration and uh, port profiles here this is where all of our clients will show up and you can you know click on my I clicked on my name and you can see uh, information there and then we have the built-in captive portal we are going to get to all of this then I have enabled the PBX and so you can see this looks exactly like a standard UCM <clears throat> system information here this should all look familiar um, now the only thing is remember we are we can only add 12 extensions at the moment so if I try to add 15 it says up to 12 users you can add 12 more so if I upgrade that license file then I could create more than 12 and then we're gonna have that four simultaneous uh, call limit. So smaller offices, I don't really think that that's going to be an issue. But this is the full featured UCM. So we'll, we're going to set this all up because I'm actually tearing out, uh, tearing out. I'm replacing all of my Ubiquity gear here uh, with this. We're going to run this live in production as we do the setup, so that that you can see how it works. And like I said, now. Um, so you can see you've got the backup option here, but we can't restore um, from, you know, like if I've got like a UCM 6304 and I've got the POTS lines configured, I can't import that into this. We'll try to import my, um, we'll, we'll put my backup for my UCM 6202 in, which I'm not using any of the pot li POTS lines, We'll put it on a USB and we'll see if we can get it to restore. But I'm not, I'm not super hopeful with that. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But this PBX should look familiar. And then new to this is the unified communication endpoints. So you can see third party, and this will detect third party phones. Now, I haven't tried to deploy anything with third party phones, um, but it at least was giving me manufacturer and model number when I had a couple different manufacturers' phones, and we'll try it here. So here you can do uh, fast provisioning, and then you've got device management, so IPC. So these are your IP cameras here, and then you've got your voice over IP phones, and this is where we can set those global policies for all the devices, model templates, model updates, firmware, and VoIP device settings. So um, this, if you remember this, this is zero config, right? So that's just a little bit of an overview about the GCC series. I am super excited about this. You take <clears throat> the power of everything that Grandstream's doing and you can put it in a box like this you make it priced right. It's so attractive to the market because now we, we take some of those switches like you're in the rack. 
we pair it with this with a couple of the APs. Uh, it's got the PBX built in. It can do the SSL inspection. I mean, we, we're checking insurance company boxes. We're checking requirements for end users, for corporate policy, the whole thing. I am super excited about this. So if you've got questions about this before the next video comes out, let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video and you can't wait for more, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links and a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, anything from voice over IP to networking to security, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact form that's right there on the front page, and someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible. Come on over to community.willyhow.com, join the community, share your knowledge, ask your questions, and just be part of the part of the gang. So once again, I'm Willie. Look forward for look forward to a run on configuration videos for these devices. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.